So I've now shown you how to get the client natted using port address translation. On the server router, we're gonna create a static NAT entry so that when traffic arrives going to the server's public IP address, it's natted to the private IP address. Okay, so on the router, I'll show you what's been configured so that you can see how it works. And then I'll show you how to configure it. On the client laptop over here, we can access the server. The server is running the IIS service again, but what I've actually done here is configure the server with a private IP address. So unlike our cloud example, the server has this IP address, 172.16.104. In other words, a private RFC 1918 address. So on the server, I can go to 172.16.1.104, the local IP address and get access to the server. That's because I'm running IIS on that server at the top over there. So that laptop is running IIS but the client PC is not using that IP address. It's not gonna be able to go to 172.16.104. That IP address is non-routable on the internet. My internet router, which is the router at the bottom here, has no visibility of that IP address. That IP address is non-routable on the internet. So only the public IP address is available. So what I've done on the server router is enable NAT using this command, IP NAT inside source static. It's a static IP address. We are NATing this inside IP address to this outside IP address or private IP address to this public IP address. I've also specified the inside and outside interfaces. So show run interface gigabit 000. That's our outside interface, very similar to our client router, gigabit 001 is our inside interface, same as the client router. The difference here is this command allows us to create a static NAT entry. Show IP NAT translations will show us that static entry and then any entries that are created by sessions. So as an example, if I refresh the page on the phone, on the server, we can see that the same client is connecting to our server. Notice the server has this IP address, 172.16.1.104. The clients are connecting to this IP address. Notice the port is 80. But the client IP addresses are shown as follows, and there are differentiations between the sessions because of this outside local, outside global entries. On the client PC again, if I open up a different browser, so I'll open up Edge, I'll go to Chrome, I'll go to Brave, different browsers. On the server router, we can see all of those entries, which allows the router to differentiate sessions going to the same server. The phone and the PC looks the same, same IP address, 145.224.65.100 but the port numbers allow the router to differentiate different sessions going to the same server. Okay, we can also have a look at statistics again. So notice we've got our hits, we can see our outside and inside interfaces, we can see the active translations, one being a static translation, five being dynamic translations. You'll often see this extensible option in NAT translations, basically multiple devices can share the same IP address. We won't worry too much about that for the CCNA course. Notice we see the hits and misses. So what I'll do is go to the client and refresh something. So we had 1837. Notice it's gone up to 1844 now, number of hits. Looking at our translations again, we see various translations here. Okay, so Let's remove the configuration and then I'll add it back so that you can see what I'm doing step by step. So first thing is I'll remove outside and inside from the various interfaces. So interface gigabit 000 is our outside interface. So no IP NAT outside. Interface gigabit 001, no IP NAT inside. If you find this confusing, don't worry about it. I'll go through the whole config again, showing you how to set this up. And what I'll do is remove the static NAT translation. The important thing to remember with the static NAT translation is you do the inside IP address first. In other words, your private IP address, and then you do your 
global IP address. It's confusing with Cisco terminology, but if you use question mark, it'll make it easier for you. So if I type show run pipe include NAT, notice no NAT configuration now on the router. So on my PC over here, if I try and get to that server, that's gonna time out because there is no NAT translation available. Show IP NAT translations on the server router, no translations there. The client will not be able to access that server. I'll just, I'll copy this to another tab and notice it just hangs. We can't get to that server because the server is no longer there. No option to get to the server. You can see site can't be reached because server is not available. Okay, so on the server, this is the router once again that's connecting to the server. So our topology looks as follows. We've got a client, client router, got our ISP router, our server router, and our server. We are configuring the server router in this example. Okay, so I've removed the config. Let's do the whole configuration again. So show run pipe include NAT shows us that we have no NAT configuration on the router. So conf t IP NAT, we are going to NAT an inside IP address, not outside, so IP NAT inside. We're gonna NAT source IP addresses, not destination IP addresses. We are going to use static NAT rather than a list. Now you can NAT multiple protocols or individual protocols such as TCP or UDP, but we're gonna do NAT here where we NAT rather than PAT a single IP address. So it's going to be our internal IP address or inside or local IP address. So make sure that you put the right IP address first. And now we specify our global IP address, which hopefully I'll get right. So 45.56.73.104. So that's all we need to configure. Then we need to go on to our interfaces. This interface gigabit 000 is our outside interface, so IP NAT, and we need to specify outside. And then we go to our inside interface and we type IP NAT and we specify inside. So just to look at the configuration again, show run interface gigabit 000. That's our outside interface. Gigabit 001 is our inside interface. Show run pipe include NAT. That is our NAT translation. Hopefully if we've done it right, we'll be able to access the server or connect to the server and there you go. So that's in Brave, this is in Edge and this is in Chrome. So show IP NAT translations. We can see our NAT configuration that we've done and then we can see the sessions to the server. So if I clear the NAT translations, what you'll notice is the one remains, the entry that we configured. But when traffic is sent, the other entries are added. So I'll just press enter on one of the browsers and notice we get that entry there. Notice this IP address of the server is unique because we have got entries from our clients using port numbers here. So if we opened up another browser and connected to the server, so we've got one browser, two browsers, three browsers, all connecting to the server. On the server now, notice we see multiple entries for our different browser connections. So connection to the server on port 80 is unique for each session. If I connected to the server using my phone, we will see additional entries there. So the phone is able to connect to the server, show IP NAT translations, we can see the same IP address connected to the server because the client router is NATing both the phone and the PC. But what happens if I connect to the ISP router? So on the ISP router, let's open up a Telnet session to the server, 45, 56, 73, 104, but I'm gonna to go to port 80. So notice we get connection opened here. So I'm telnetting to port 80. So on the server, we'll see a different IP address here. This is the IP address of the router. So we have our phone sending traffic, we have our PC sending traffic, but notice we have the server here connecting to the router. This is a different IP address because the router is in the internet. It's our ISP router. It's not being natted like the PC over here 
and the phone over here is being natted to the client router. So again, show run, pipe include NAT. We can see our static NAT entry there. We can see that we've configured inside and outside IP addresses. So it was as simple as that to configure static NAT. Static NAT is quite easy to configure, but notice we are actually using port address translation here rather than pure NAT because the port numbers are shown in the NAT table. You don't have to do it this way where you configure an entire IP address to be NATed. So you could use your router's IP address rather than a dedicated IP address. We're not gonna cover that in the CCNA course. We're simply gonna look at a basic static NAT configuration. Okay, so we've covered port address translation. We've covered static NAT. I now wanna show you how to use dynamic NAT, which is different in that you are creating a pool of addresses. You need to know this for the exam as well, where you create a pool of addresses for internal hosts.